Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I'm always on the lookout for cheap tablets, especially ones running Windows. And I found this one uh, from a viewer suggestion at the Microsoft Store for only $79. It's from a company called New Vision and this is running with the full version of Windows 10, uh, but it is packed into a nice little 8-inch tablet here that we'll be exploring in this review today. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware and I was very surprised with the build quality on this. I was expecting something all plastic and very cheap feeling with a lousy display. Uh, this has none of those issues. It's actually pretty well built. It's got a metal case on the back here. It feels uh, rather solid and uh, pretty nice in the hand. The display is probably the best feature of it. 1900 by 1200, so a full 1080p resolution on this essentially. And it's also an IPS display, so you get very good viewing angles and uh, really nice detailed sharp uh, images on screen. So they did a very nice job with the display on this. It does have some bleed through when you've got a solid color on screen and that's pretty common with these low-cost IPS displays but the fact they were able to get a full HD IPS display into something uh, so inexpensive is a pretty good deal and I'm not going to ding them too much on that you got a capacitive home button here to load up your start menu or if you're in tablet mode to go back uh, to the home screen there uh, this is running with an Atom Cherry Trail X5Z 8300 processor this is a very common processor on these types of devices and when we go through our performance benchmarks in a little bit you'll see the performance is pretty much where uh, it should be with this chipset inside of it. It has though only 2 gigs of RAM and only 32 gigabytes of storage and that might present some difficulties especially if you want to install a lot of software on it. Uh, there's some ways you can mitigate that a little bit and I'll show you as we get through the rest of the hardware here but uh, generally pretty limited but again you're only paying $79 and you have to keep your uh, expectations in check. It's got the full version of Windows. This is Windows 10 Home Edition built in, fully licensed and because this was bought from the Microsoft Microsoft Store. This is a signature edition PC, so there's no junkware or adware or anything else loaded on here beyond just the uh, normal Windows experience. I did find, though, when I took it out of the box that the updates for it took forever, so plan accordingly. Uh, you'll probably want to update everything before you install uh, software on it. On the side here, you do have a card slot for a, a micro SD card. I did stick in a, a fast uh, 16 gigabyte card to give me some space for installing some Steam games on it, and that's one of the nice things about Steam is that it does let you install things on other drives, including SD cards. So I do have a pretty fast uh, SD card in here, and I suggest looking for a more premium card with a very fast write speed to try to get as much performance as you can, especially if you plan to load some applications up onto that card. On the other side here, you just have your uh, power switch and your volume rocker. On the bottom, you have the speaker output. Speaker's okay, not fantastic, but uh, good enough for the price point. On the top here, you've got a micro HDMI out, so you can connect an external display up to it, which I did earlier today, and that worked just fine, and just like any other Windows device would. I believe it will also support uh, some of the wireless display adapters, too, because there is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built into this, of course, so uh, you can get into some of those other displays if you want to do that without a wire. Over here, you've got a single USB port. This is for charging, uh, but it's also compatible with the OTG format, and they include an adapter in the box, so you can plug in a standard USB device into this, but it doesn't let you charge at the same time. So there really is only one effective USB port on here. You can use it to charge, or you can plug a device in, but not both. I did try one of those Y connectors that you can get that allow power to pass through in addition to a USB device. It didn't work on here, so this is it. Uh, so that's probably its biggest limitation here is the fact that it doesn't have a second USB port. Many of these tablets do, this one doesn't, but you do get what's something that a lot of Apple users don't get anymore, is a full headphone jack there which also serves as audio input and it's got two mics here on the top of the case. So overall, uh, very nicely built. It doesn't weigh all that much either, 0.6 pounds or uh, 272 grams. The battery on here in light usage, I think you're gonna get about seven hours, give or take. If you start loading up a lot of games or uh, doing some more intensive kind of activity, you'll see far less than that. But uh, for doing tablet kinds of things like email and web browsing, I think you'll get 
uh, seven hours out of there without too many issues. Uh, there are two cameras on here. You've got a lousy camera on the front and a really lousy camera here on the back. Uh, the back camera is a five megapixel camera. It takes horrible pictures as you can see here and the video on it even though it does 1080p at 30 frames per second is equally bad. It looks like there's a frost or something over the lens. I did clean it before I uh, uploaded those pictures there for you to see. So the camera on here is not its strongest selling point uh, but it does do well in other areas. So let's take a look now and see how it performs. Forms. So let's kick things off with some YouTube watching. I've got my uh, YouTube channel here playing a 1080p video at 60 frames per second and all looks like it is performing as expected here. I'll pull up the stats for nerds so you can get a feel for any drop frames we might be experiencing, but so far uh, no drop frames on the playback here and this is performance consistent uh, with other devices running with this same chipset. Uh, the color on the display looks very nice. Also, all things considered, this is a very good video playback device and I think will do equally well with Netflix and other services. Although if you are watching online video with a browser, my suggestion is to use the Edge browser on these low-end devices, especially for 60 FPS video, as I found Google Chrome does not perform as well with these devices. I did a video on that a little while ago that you can see uh, down below in the video description. Now, web browsing on the device feels a little sluggish to me from time to time, and I think it might be the Wi-Fi's fault. I was noticing that when I was downloading updates, as I mentioned before, those came in rather slowly, uh, but also some of my Steam games as I was downloading uh, sometimes would trail off a little bit in the process of those things coming down. And I'm seeing similar behavior when I'm out browsing the web. Uh, so sometimes the page will render and everything will come in very quickly as it is right now, at least for uh, what you would get out of one of these low-powered Intel chips. Other times it comes in much slower, and I think it's, again, due to the fault of the Wi-Fi. Uh, the Wi-Fi here is a, a 2.4 gigahertz wireless N radio. It's not supporting uh, AC, so you're not going to get any of the newer Wi-Fi technology going on here. And sometimes it works just fine, as it's doing right now, and other times it runs rather slowly. It's really, really no rhyme or reason to it. Maybe it just doesn't like the Wi-Fi routers I have here at the house. Uh, one thing I did notice because I'm running uh, multiple access points here is that it was sometimes going after the lower powered access point on the other side of the house versus the higher powered one that was nearby. So there's just something going on here with the Wi-Fi, at least in uh, my particular setup that is slowing this down slightly. I did run the browserbench.org speedometer test, which is a way of measuring how fast the uh, web performance is irrespective of bandwidth. And there we got a score of 21.44, which puts it right in line with another uh, Atom-based device we looked at just last week, the Lenovo Mix 320. That one came in around 20. Uh, the margin of error here is about the same, so it's performing, at least in its hardware side of things from the processor's perspective, uh, about where I would expect it to. And again, I think these performance issues are Wi-Fi related. And because this tablet is running the full version of Windows, you can run the full version of Windows software. So I've got an older version of Microsoft Word here running on it just fine. It installed just like any other Windows app would install. I can scroll through this newsletter template here and make some adjustments to it, and it's not going to be as fast as an i7-based monster, but you're paying 80 bucks here and getting very usable performance out of uh, this little tablet here. I've got a uh, Bluetooth uh, keyboard trackpad attached. This thing is from Logitech. I bought this about two or three years ago. Uh, it's great, especially for computers that lack ports. I can get an all-in-one keyboard trackpad combo here uh, that can connect up via Bluetooth. It also uh, works with a dongle. I've got a review to this down below, but uh, generally I think it's working fine, especially given that you don't have to pay all that much to get a, a pretty useful little computer here. Now, one thing to note on the accessories you might buy for this, uh, most of them might cost the same or just about the same as the computer does itself. So this keyboard trackpad combo I mentioned costs about $60, only $20 less than the entire computer will cost you here. I'm running Minecraft now to get a feel for its gaming prowess. This is the Java version of Minecraft, which most people are still running. Uh, this is running at about 15 to 20 frames per second. Sometimes it does does a little better, sometimes it does a little less than better, uh, but we are running at 1900 by 1200. So I think if we reduce some of the image quality and went down to 720p, uh, we'd have a more playable experience, but this does give you an idea as to uh, what this little processor inside is capable of doing. So pretty impressive performance out of this thing, and I'm running the Optifine Performance Enhancing Plugin. Now you can run Steam on this, of course, because it is a Windows-based computer. So let's take a look and see if Rocket League can run on it. 
So I've got Rocket League running here on the tablet. We are running at 800 by 600, but it is running pretty decently uh, with all the settings turned down. Uh, we're seeing frame rates anywhere from 30 to 40 frames per second, so very, very playable here. It just doesn't look all that great, but it does give you an idea as to what you might be able to squeeze out for performance on this little tablet. Uh, a lot of the AAA titles like GTA 5 and others do not perform as nicely, but it is cool to be able to play some modern stuff on this device just in a very low resolution. But there are a number of games that do play well on these little tablets, things that are like 10 years old or so. So Half-Life 2 and many of the games from that era actually do have some uh, decent performance on here, even at 720p. So there are some gaming options for it. Uh, some of the newer indie titles, the 2D games like Shovel Knight, typically work okay on here. Some do better than others. You may want to check system requirements first, but you can have a somewhat decent playable gaming experience on here if you uh, set your graphical expectations accordingly. These also work very well as game streaming devices so you can connect via Steam in-home streaming to uh, your larger gaming PC in another room for example and use this essentially as a remote uh, monitor of that game and that seems to work okay as well but remember you've got the USB port limitation here so you might be running on battery while your uh, game controller is plugged into the port but of course Bluetooth controllers should work fine. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test we got a score of 1547 which puts it right in line with other devices running with the same or similar processor in this generation. So a uh, real good comparative here is the Voyo VBook V3 Ultrabook I looked at a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that one scored right within the margin of error as this one did. And we also saw very similar scores out of the Lenovo Mix 320 as well. Now one last thing to take a look at is how well it can handle some higher end video playback. So I've got Cody running here with a Blu-ray MKV file, full uh, resolution and bit rate, and it's running just fine on here as it does on uh, other devices with the similar processor. I did get two drop frames at the outset here, but uh, generally it has been performing as expected, so that's a good thing. It doesn't do as well with the higher end HEVC stuff. So for example, this uh, 60 megabit HEVC file does not perform so well, uh, but some lower end HEVC stuff like this test file uh, do perform okay. So I think if you're running stuff off of maybe a mobile phone, as some mobile phones now are starting to do HEVC recording, you'll be okay, but uh, don't expect some Blu-ray conversion at a very high bit rate in HEVC to work, but uh, the RAW file from the Blu-ray, uh, the MKV file we just played back here, should do fine with the uh, MPEG-4 compression that those discs typically have. So all in, I think this is a pretty good little device. An 8-inch tablet, $80 running the full version of Windows, and what's nice about this too is that they give you a one-year warranty with it, so so uh, you do have some protection there. I think with the Amazon tablets that are about this price, they only give you like 90 days. So that's a good thing to have here. Uh, battery life seems acceptable for the price point. I like the build quality, believe it or not. The screen does get gunked up with fingerprints a little more than I would like, but uh, generally it is better than many of the other cheap tablets I have looked at that don't have the same kind of support that uh, this one will probably be coming with. And uh, the fact that it's being sold in Microsoft stores gives me some confidence, maybe some comfort at least, uh, that somebody is going to stand behind the product here. So if you're looking for a cheap tablet and uh, understand what you're getting into here, I think you'll be fine. I do recommend though, as I mentioned before, getting a, a decently fast uh, SD card to put in here. Some of those ultra or extreme uh, cards from SanDisk work pretty well and I think those will perform uh, with games and other things better than a cheaper card might. Uh, you'll definitely need that to offset its very limited storage, especially when updates come down and there's no room left on the internal storage to install them. So that'll do it for our review here of the new Vision $79 tablet. And this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.